Hello and welcome back to another episode in the advice series. I'm going in chronological order to whatever was sent in. And today is episode two of Ask Kaylin. I have someone that has asked me for an updated version of your non-attachment video. I feel like there's so many detachment videos on YouTube now, and I just want to know if your thoughts have changed at all. Okay, this is interesting. I might have to do a reactions video today because I have not watched that video in a very long time. I believe I made it in 2020. So let's go find out Kaylin's Coffee Talk and let's write detachment beside it. I will link the original video in the show notes in case anybody wants to watch. Oh my gosh, okay, three years ago. Let's see, let's see if my thoughts on detachment has changed or non-attachment. Oh, an ad. <laughs> Girl, get paid. I'm paying myself right now. Today's Coffee Talk episode is brought to you by Trumetta. One of their great products is mushroom coffee. You'll feel an uptake in your productivity every time you drink it. And Trumetta offers their best deal to date to all Coffee Talk listeners. You can get a free electric mixer and 40% off their coffee plus free shipping in the US if you go to trumetta.com slash coffee to fuel your productivity and creativity with some delicious mushroom coffee. Again, that is T-R-U-M-E-T-A.com slash C-O F F E E. Okay, this is a long video, so I'm going to speed it up. Just a heads up. And I will play it on the screen or just in general. You'll be able to hear the old audio and I'll jump back in and let you know. In case you're listening today, I'll especially make it somehow apparent that it's not old me talking anymore, new me, if my thoughts have changed. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? And welcome back to the latest Coffee Talk, where we talk about everything from lifestyle, wellness, motivation, inspiration, spiritual, supernatural, all of the above. And today we're gonna to be doing a coffee brew, which feeds more into the lifestyle slash kind of general topic discussions. And today I wanted to talk about the idea of non-attachment. It's something that I've been looking into and reading about, and I'm just, I really have been embracing the idea, or at least trying to embrace the idea of non-attachment in my life. And I feel like, it's something that has really helped me because I used to be somebody that tried to embrace the idea of not caring. Now, it's nearly impossible to live a life of full detachment in big cities or with families, friends, goals, and dreams, and all of that. And especially too, if you're a newcomer to non-attachment like myself, like I feel like it's one of those things that's like a muscle, you have to work at it, but it is something that is feasible and accessible to all of us. And it's an idea and a perspective on life that all of us can take. It's really having the capacity to be able to love and care about things without attaching to, or to really embrace the impermanence of life is, is the borderline root of non-attachment. Okay. So Right away, I want to jump in here and say, I do so far agree with everything I have said, how there is a huge difference between non-attachment and indifference, and also how truly the root of non-attachment is holding space for the impermanence of things. It is interesting now, I will say, now that I am a mom, there is a new, more profound deeper sense of attachment that I've never experienced before from growing a baby in my body to birthing that baby to nurturing, loving and helping that baby grow in that level of attachment is hard to have a sense of non-attachment with. But again, it comes right back down to what I had just said in the video, which is, yeah, it's not necessarily about not loving things or not being attached to things, but more so not being attached to their outcome or not being at attached to their permanence, not trying to hold on to things and keep things exactly the way they are as they are. I mean, it is hard, especially again, now through the lens of being a mom to watch my baby grow, to hit a new milestone, to hit a new age, see old pictures and be like, oh my gosh, you're growing up so fast. But even in that, I guess my sense of non-attachment with that would come from feeling the gratitude to be able to see a new milestone, to watch him grow, to see my baby do things, you know, it, it comes with a sense of pride, not necessarily a sense of attachment. So I'll keep going, but that is definitely something that has changed since filming this video is that, and I, I focus very highly on attachment parenting. So I, I, what that is in case nobody knows is focusing on having and nurturing and fostering a safe attachment for your children so that they don't feel any sense of insecurity in whether or not you love them or that you've created a safe space for them. It doesn't mean that, you know, your kids can just do whatever they want or that you don't reprimand your children or anything like that. 
you still guide them. You still let them know like, no, this is wrong and this is right. But it's more so that you don't hold their love over their head as like a form of punishment. And also further than that, it's it's even just down to especially in the earlier years, the first year and a half. He's a year and a half right now. It's focused a lot on even just our choices and routine that allow him to know that we aren't very far, know that we're still in the same room, know that he doesn't have to figure things out too quickly by himself. So yeah, so far, that's the only thing I would say that's drastically changed since this video, but I could still see how non-attachment can play into even the deepest forms of bonds and connections as human beings having the courage to leave yourself open and to allow things to matter to you for the experience and for the value of it without attaching with the outcome and its relation to you. And more than not, especially if you're working that non-attachment muscle, because it's so hard to rewire our brains, it's not like it's something you can just snap your fingers and be like, okay, the outcome of this no longer matters to me, but it's really just bumping it down on the priority list until you're able to kind of sweep it away. You know what I mean? Just like not letting the outcome of whatever it is that you enjoy, whatever it is that brings you happiness or any kind of sense of fulfillment in your life, not letting the outcome of that thing and in its relation to you and your life matter more than the experience of that thing or the value that you get or the virtue that you get with that thing. So I'm gonna keep going. I know that sounds really complicated, but by the end of this, I swear it'll make more sense. So let's discuss where this whole concept even comes from. Now, again, I kind of mentioned that I was introduced to the idea of non-attachment through yoga and yoga philosophy. I read the yoga sutras and I just remember hitting a point where it was like, I have a lot of it highlighted, but hitting a point and I remember highlighting the whole section on non-attachment and just being like, wow, like just reading that, I felt a sense of freedom. Imagine if I could take that knowledge and actually embrace it and put it into my life, what more or how much more of a sense of freedom I could have. And it's funny because even that, it's like, you can't attach to the idea of, okay, if I embrace non-attachment in my life, I'm going to have more joy because then you're attaching to joy. It's really a conundrum. But for thousands and thousands of years now, Buddhist monks have used the idea of non-attachment in order to reach their own spiritual enlightenment. So they literally detach from sometimes even their family, their cities, their like a sense of living in society, uh, belongings, possessions, and even going as far as detaching from your body or detaching from life, life in order to reach spiritual enlightenment. Now, unless your goal is spiritual enlightenment, then you don't have to not attach or detach or like, you know, in a sense of you don't have to let those things out of your life. You don't have to push those things away. You can actually keep those things in your life and still live your life exactly as you do now, but with a more with a higher sense of freedom and a higher sense of joy by learning how to actually not attach to these things. And again, I just a reminder that this doesn't mean that you don't care or that you don't love these things or that you don't respect or honor these things in your life, but it's really just not allowing yourself to need these things. And okay, couple things that I would probably pick apart here in hindsight now. The focus and the attachment really still is on freedom and on joy. And so something that I would say and maybe I get to this later in the video. However, something I would say now is that non-attachment really comes from not doing anything for the sake of any kind of outcome at all. So you're not gonna focus on non-attachment so that you can feel more freedom or more joy. Non-attachment comes from almost this really, really deep state of flow, this deep state of surrender to all that is, all that will be. And it doesn't mean, again, that you let go of the, of the responsibilities you have or you let go of the tasks that you need to complete. Again, something that is just coming up perfectly right now because it is such a drastic change from when I originally recorded this is that I am a mom now. So I can't just not attach to the things that I need to do in order to make sure that my kid is well taken care of. What I can practice non-attachment with is knowing that he does not owe me to not have a meltdown or in those moments, especially in the moments where we're being tested the most, the moments that my toddler does have a meltdown, despite me being tired, exhausted and pouring myself into doing everything I can to take care of him. Non-attachment is, okay, can I surrender to this moment? Can I take a deep breath? Can I just continue to move with the flow of life? That is, I think, in hindsight, the truest essence of non-attachment is being able to fully surrender in any given moment, catch yourself when you're attaching again and come back to surrender, come back to that state of flow. And I, I do agree with myself that it does not mean that you don't care. It does not mean that you don't love things or that you don't wish for certain outcomes. It is very embedded in our nature to want to survive and to want to thrive. It's holding space for that part of ourselves, the part of me that wants to, to not just survive, but definitely thrive. 
but still surrender to the flow of life, still surrender to what is not what I think should be and still surrender to, okay, I'm going to do these things, but without any kind of expectation in return. Let's keep going. I really just want to emphasize that this isn't the idea of not caring or like super independence and like that, even saying that you don't need those things, we actually truly do. It's just that you don't need it in order to find or feel that sense of fulfillment in yourself or a sense of value for yourself. Or, you know, it's like really kind of embracing the responsibility for your own happiness. So there's a story of a Zen master named Ryokin and he lived a super simple life in a little hut at the bottom of a mountain. And one day this thief comes and breaks into his little hut and then discovers that there's nothing in the hut for him to steal. And while this happens, Ryokin actually comes home and discovers the thief in his hut. So then Ryokin says to the thief, wow, you must have come a very long way to visit me. Here, take the clothes off my back as a gift. I won't let you go empty handed. And the thief who is kind of shocked, you know, kind of slumps away and just leaves. And so Ryokin sits under the moon completely naked and says, poor fellow, I wish I could give him the beauty of the moon. And that entire story is the idea of enlightenment. You know, you might think like, why would he do that? Why would he give his clothes? But for him, and, and really, I mean, it's the biggest emphasis in that story is how he's saying to the moon, like, poor guy, like, what do you mean, poor guy? He's a thief. He stole your clothes. But in his eyes, he's thinking, you know, I can see the beauty of the moon. I'm not attached to my clothes. I'm not attached to things. Like I'm, a, I'm just enjoying the experience of life. And he feels bad for the thief because he knows that the thief can't see the beauty of the moon. He can't give him the beauty of the moon. He can't give him the beauty of life. This thief is caught up in attachments and needing to steal things from under pe from other people in order to feel fulfilled or safe or whatever it is. And Rio can instead can see that the only true attachment is to life experience and is in non-attachment. And so okay, super interesting story of the Zen master. Uh, I find that this is also some highlighting something that, again, I'm not sure if I'm going to talk about this in this chat, but something that I find that we can also attach to is even our, okay, what's the right way to say this? We can also attach to the things that are going wrong in our lives. We can also attach to the things that suck. And while obviously a lot of non-attachment videos, a lot of non-attachment theories out there and discussions out there focus a lot on not attaching to material goods and not attaching to, you know, a positive state of mind, not attaching to needing the outcome to be the way you want it to be. But also, too, I think it's important to not attach to our struggles, not attached to the things that happen to us that aren't so great either. And that's not to say, again, disclaimer, that we cannot express the emotions that arise as we experience things that suck or that we can't express the emotions that arise when we experience things that are great. I couldn't imagine trying to practice this idea of non-attachment so far in a way that I would, you know, give birth to my son and have no reaction. Like that's just to me, not human and not part of what the true essence of non-attachment is, which is being able to enjoy the beauty of life, I think I just said this, without attaching to it, but also being able to experience the downfalls of life without attaching to it, being able to express yourself through those things without attaching to it and attaching to the hard parts of life, just like attaching to the great parts of life. I can even dumb this down and make it simpler. It would be the same as attaching to the negative things people say about you versus attaching to the positive things people say about you. Either way, you make it your identity when you attach to it. So just like positive versus negative experiences, if you can experience them, surrender to them, express them, because we are very, very fully entitled to or we would not be created the way we are to express the emotions that we feel when we experience life. However, you don't let them stick to you. You let them move through you, move past you, and they don't become part of your identity and they don't become... Wow, damn, this is hard, though, because when I think again back, like having my son did change part of my identity in a very, very core state. I became a mom. But also, I mean, I've never experienced that kind of profound love before. Damn, this is catching me a little bit because the non-attachment essence of that, I think, does come down to it was a beautiful experience. I love to reminisce on it. It did change the core aspect of my life in practice of non-attachment. I still would come back to surrendering to the flow of life, surrendering to, okay, that changed a core part of me, but I still know that there's going to come a day and it breaks my heart to even think about it, that I'm going to go, that I'm going to leave and my son will be here without me. And I can't attach to any kind of outcome for either of us. However, I'm going to do my best to set him up for being okay to live life without his safe spaces anymore, you know, to create that safe space within himself 
so that he doesn't have to attach to the outside world too much either, or that no matter what happens in the external, he has that safe place in the internal. And I can only to teach that through safe attachment in his earlier years. This is so interesting through the hindsight or through the lens of parenthood. But also, too, because that is very metaphoric to even our experiences with ourselves. Like, can we create the safest space within ourselves, the safest place to surrender within ourselves? That no matter what happens in the external, what we come to, f to gain or lose, to experience in the highs or the lows, that we're okay. We're good. We're fine. In my own life, how I'm trying to embrace the idea of non-attachment, what I find is working for me. So first and foremost, it's the idea of being able to have a deep sense of fulfillment within. And let me start by saying that everything that I'm pretty much going to say right now is super, I mean, idealistic, right? Yeah, of course, all of us want to have a deep sense of fulfillment within. If I could just do that and snap my fingers, I would. Um, but again, this is what the root of non-attachment comes from. And another book that you should read if you get a chance is The, the Courage to be Disliked, because the entire idea behind that book as well really embraces non-attachment, even with our pasts, and turns the way that we look at life into tools that we might use in order to fulfill some sort of goal that we have, right? And sometimes we don't want to be honest about what our true goals are. So for instance, like believing that you can't be truly fulfilled is almost like a tool that you can use for yourself to stop yourself from having to put in the effort to be truly fulfilled. I know that's not going to be the case for actually everybody, but I can say that in my life and in my experience that it was definitely the case for me, you know, believing that I couldn't be truly fulfilled on my own made it easier than actually trying or doing the work that it took to be fulfilled on my own. So embracing that belief became a tool in my life. It's, it became an attachment. And so it's really, this is interesting. This is interesting because in hindsight, I do know even at the time that I filmed this video that I was really, really suffering with being alone. We as human beings, we do have these core essential needs, these hierarchy of needs, I believe is the coined term for it. And this is where non-attachment can definitely get stumped. And it really does come down to what your end goal really truly is in life and in, in your belief, even for why we're here. Uh, I, I struggle to say this, but I would say that personally and for most of us, we actually can't be truly fulfilled and okay by ourselves on our own. We can be okay on our own, but I think some of the deepest sense of fulfillment as human beings comes from the balance of being okay by yourself, but also being in healthy relation to other. And so perhaps the real essence of non-attachment is also not attaching to needing to feel fulfilled either. It's just, it just comes back to surrendering. Even if you're going through a state where you are alone and you aren't feeling fulfilled, like I am, I want to call myself out a little bit here because I know I was really struggling at this time. And even though I'm saying like, oh, you know, telling myself I can't feel fulfilled on my own is what's stopping me from feeling fulfilled on my own or putting in the work to feel fulfilled on my own. I put in so much work, so much work. I was doing so much therapy. I was doing so, I was trying so hard to connect to other people and failing and just like not having good luck. And so it had nothing to do with my belief or the work, it had more to do with not being able to surrender to the chapter of life that I was in because it was so deeply uncomfortable. And it was deeply uncomfortable for good reason because we need healthy relation and connection to other, but I had wounds. So it's, again, it's interesting. There's so much here that we could really look at through a couple different lenses, but through the lens of non-attachment, it's, it's like, again, can we, can we find the way to healthily express our wounds? in order to no longer attach to them. Ah, that's tough because again, I think that healthy healing from the wounds caused by other people only can come from healthy experiences with other people. We can only take our healing journey so far on our own. So again, it's just surrendering to wherever you're at, whatever state you're in, whatever you're experiencing, however fulfilled you are or are not. It's not about feeling fulfilled. It's about letting what is be what is without needing or wanting or wishing it to be any different. Okay, let me rephrase that because we should, there is a sense of motivation that comes from wanting to feel better. Damn, I don't know, this one's stumping me a little bit. It really truly is. It's, it's like, you gotta let that motivation be there so that you do do the things, do the work, do the, put yourself out there to make those connections and do those things that do help you feel more fulfilled, but I guess just not attached to, not attached to it either way. Know that no matter what, we could be taken from this planet at any moment, any second. And so, yeah, like 
experience life for what it is, experience it in its highs and its lows and its loneliness and in its overwhelming too many people. I don't have enough time alone to myself isness, but yeah, I think it really is that simple. Just don't attach to it either way. Just don't ha attach to, you know, any experience you're having. Surrender, surrender, surrender. That's t to me. I feel like this is the word that just keeps coming back. That non-attachment is really just surrendering to what truly is and being in the state of flow of life wherever you're at. It's really, again, it's a muscle. It's not something you can just snap your fingers and feel deeply fulfilled, but it's really just kind of having the courage in moments when you catch yourself feeling unfulfilled to flip that on its head and be like, actually, it's not saying that everything right now is perfect. It's just saying that I am embracing this experience. I am not attaching to anything that isn't presently here in the moment. And for that reason, you sense that deep fulfillment wherever you are, whatever you're doing, despite the things that might need to be done, despite the things that might not have gone your way or are going your way, but it's still giving you that sense of fulfillment to think, wow, you know what? I'm just going to accept everything just as it is. There we go. That, that I agree with. It's accepting the experience for what it is and what it's giving you, even if it's not giving you exactly what you want. It's like even in your states of deep loneliness, I wouldn't I wouldn't have used the word fulfilled because I don't think you can just be fulfilled by being like, OK, I just accept that I'm super lonely right now or I just accept that I'm struggling right now. And suddenly you're fulfilled by that. It's more so it's suddenly you're surrendering to it. You're not fighting it anymore. You're not expecting yourself to be behave or or feel any other way. You're just like this is the truest experience of human of human life. And it is what it is. And I accept my experience as for what it is. That's non-attachment. True, true. Today's Coffee Talk episode is brought to you by Trumetta. It's a premium supplement company based out of California that strives to make self-care easy. And one of their great products is mushroom coffee. It's a must have to add to your morning routine. It tastes delicious. No mushroom aftertaste, only the benefits that all the mushrooms bring. So any mushroom lovers, tune in, listen up. This organic premium coffee blend has lion's mane mushroom for productivity reishi mushroom for immune support, cordyceps to boost your energy, and of course, a little kick of caffeine to get you where you need to in terms of your energy levels for the day. So start your day healthier with Trumetta Mushroom Coffee and see for yourself how much it helps you focus and get stuff done. You'll feel an uptake in your productivity every time you drink it. And Trumetta offers their best deal to date to all Coffee Talk listeners. You can get a free electric mixer and 40% off their coffee plus free shipping in the US if you go to trumetta.com slash coffee to fuel your productivity and creativity with some delicious mushroom coffee. Again, that is T-R-U-M-E-T-A dot com slash C O F F E E. Nobody wants to talk about death. Nobody wants to embrace the idea of death. Nobody wants to think about their own death because it's it's scary. But if you're able to embrace the impermanence of life and the impermanence of who you are without the impermanence of your energy, I think that one is what is up to topic or debate for most people, right? It's like, okay, nobody really knows where we go. That one I'll leave for you to believe. But it's embracing the impermanence of your own sense of existence. Then you're able to kind of free yourself to really evolve and enjoy it more. Not to mention, and this is where I'm gonna get a little cosmic -y on you guys, but and this is where everybody is subject to their own beliefs, but it really kind of gives you a better sense of your interconnectedness to the universe and how energy plays a big role in this and how you are part of such a large tapestry of life and energy and time and so many things that have come before us and so many things that will hopefully come after us. And when you think of life that way, when you really are able to take such an objective point of view and then hold space for that sense of impermanence and hold space for even though it is impermanence, it's still part of something bigger than you, then again, you're able to find or embrace that sense of non-attachment to the things that are- I love this. I love this because again, with time and with experience, I can see this even deeper now. This, what I'm really getting at here without realizing it is that ability to zoom out and see how short and fleeting our life is and see the interconnectedness of all beings and all the life that'll come after us, all the life that came before us. What I'm really also hitting home here is that it takes us out of, it's really the opposite of main character energy. It takes us out of individualistic thinking it takes us out of we are the center of the universe and i think that non-attachment does have a huge thread of that through it this idea that and again it is very human nature it is very self it comes from a, a healthy sense of self-interest that we move through the world constantly aware thinking and filtering things through ourselves and what it means to ourselves how it's connected to ourselves and attaching everything almost in a way somehow through and to ourselves but when you're able to get that objective point of view you realize that we are one of billions and billions and billions and billions of billions if you count the past and the present and the future and because of that, we can 
separate that stickiness a little bit, create some space between the observer and the one that's observing, i.e. your energy and the body you're, you're experiencing your life through in a lot of ways. And through that space, in that space, we can realize, ah, this is where the non-attachment is. This is where even though, yes, I am in my body, I can even find that sense of non-attachment to and with my body. And again, this does start to stem into what we spiritually believe. However, it comes down to we are not, even though we are the main character of our, of our own stories and our own lives, we are not the main character in anybody else's or of anybody else's or of life at large. And that, that need to attach is so understandable and so human because we're just trying so hard to get that pause, to get that state of permanence in a life that is so impermanent. And so it makes a lot of sense that that's what we do. We cling to things. We try to find our state or sense of self through owning material things and through calling ourselves a Pisces and through, you know, the books we read and the philosophies we follow and the people we surround ourselves with. But at the end of the day, it's, it's all so fleeting and it's all so, I don't want to call it meaningless. It does have meaning in its own right, but it's all just part of the flow. It's all just part of the ever changing essence of things. And so it's, it doesn't need to be so serious. None of it needs to be so serious. None of it needs to be so, or be attached to such deep parts of ourselves that allow us to feel okay and safe in life. Um, this is a long video, by the way. So I'm just skipping forward to a couple of the main points so that this coffee talk doesn't end up being too long. So how exactly does embracing the idea of non-attachment benefit you? Because like everything we just said, it sounds like a lot of work, right? Like it doesn't sound like easy work either. So what are you gonna get out of it? So, I mean, first and foremost, we can talk about the physical benefits because there are there are physical benefits really. I mean, if you think about it, it's going to lower your state of stress. And when the lower, with lower states of cortisol in your body, the stress hormone, you're gonna have less headaches. Okay, immediately, how non-attachment benefits you is kind of a conundrum in and of itself because when, and I understand where my thought process was here, but okay, let's talk about how non-attachment is gonna benefit you. AKA, let's get you attached to some outcomes of practicing this philosophy of non-attachment. It literally contradicts itself. It's like, there are going to be benefits from moving through your life, feeling a sense of surrender and feeling a sense of whatever will be, will be. And I'm open and accepting and graceful to all that I experience and all that, I, that is around me, through me, within me, so on and so forth. However, to do or to practice things like non-attachment for those reasons is a, a form of attachment. So in a lot of ways, it does make sense to talk about these things, especially when explaining and, and trying to get people onto the idea of non-attachment because people, we are motivated by the idea that something is gonna help us or better us in some way, right? So yeah, it makes sense. But again, I don't even think this part is necessary. Especially too, because someone could listen to this, hear this experience or, or practice non-attachment and then be like, wait, why isn't my stress going down? Why am I still experiencing headaches? Why am I still, you know, consuming and buying things in order to understand a better state of myself or to like express myself? So yeah, it's just super interesting that this part could be problematic in the state of, oh, let's talk about how non-attachment is going to benefit you embrace non-attachment, it really also means that you're not just not attaching to the things that you think you need, but you're also not attaching to your fears. So nothing is holding you back anymore from like getting the experience or creating the experience in your life that you want. And then when you're no longer clinging to these things and clinging to these people and clinging to these relationships, then you're actually just left there with your truth. And I think that that's why sometimes non-attachment can feel a little scary is because we hold on to these things, whether we like to believe it or not, we attach to these things because they kind of keep us from needing to face ourselves. And maybe there's things that we're afraid to face, but when you do embrace the idea of non-attachment and you no longer attach to all of these things, all of these ideas, Ideas, these concepts, these perspectives on life and all of that, and you really just kind of take life for what it is and in its richness in front of you, then you're left with your truth. And if you're able to do that, then you're able to stand more strong in your truth, which is so empowering. Now, I've already mentioned a few times today. That That's an interesting point. Also, I'm starting to lose my voice, so I'm going to wrap this up pretty quickly here. But I agree that when we stop attaching to people and to material things and to ideas and philosophies and all of this in order to 
avoid facing ourselves in order to, I think it could go, actually, I think you could even flip that on its head. I think we do that in order to have a sense of ourselves because we have no idea. There are so, the deepest questions of life are unanswered. And there's a lot of discomfort that can come from that. The, who are we? Why are we here? Who are we really? Who are we past this idea of being human? And so, yeah, we get up and we, we, put things on our bodies and we hang out with certain people and we read certain books and we follow certain philosophies and so on and so forth in order to feel safer because it gives us some semblance of or framework around what is frameless, what is answerless. It gives us some answer to the things that we have no answer for. So I actually think that yes, in some ways, especially when we come to like over consumerism or mainly using, using the things in the external realm to identify ourselves as who we are, I think that can be a little bit tricky in a way to avoid the truth of, our, of ourselves. But I think the part that is fun here to pick apart, and I don't really have an answer for it, but okay, so you don't, you you don't attach to things. You go through this state of non-attachment so that you face yourself and you face your truth. What is that truth? What is that? What's left over at the end of that? And also, can we not attach to that? Because I think my answer to what that truth would be three years ago would even be different than what it is today, which will probably be different than what I believe it to be in three years from now, or it'll all evolve, I would say might be the better way. And even in practicing non-attachment, we can't even attach to what we believe in the fleeting moments that we might experience our truest subconscious, deepest state of selves, that even that is a fleeting experience and not one we can attach to, nothing that we can be sure of. So I think it's really just coming down to surrender, like we said, and flow, like we said, but also the unknown and getting comfortable with being so uncomfortable for all of the unknown and all all of the the things that we can't control fundamental things that go on in our lives that we need to keep and one of them is goals so like how do you embrace the idea of non-attachment in your life but also have goals and when the goal is no longer outcome oriented the process of working towards that goal becomes your sense of success so even as you work towards that goal if that goal ends up changing or shifting in some way or you end up with a different outcome than you originally intended upon then you still are successful because it was never really about the outcome you were going to get from the goal to begin with it was more about the experience of going for that goal. So embracing the idea of non-attachment with your goals really kind of means you're embracing the idea of non-failure. If you know that you're showing up every day through your intentions and with your values as you work towards something, then you feel that sense of fulfillment and you're focusing on the process of what you're doing and how you're doing something rather than what it's giving you or what outcome it's going to get you. And doing that is going to give you success in embracing goals and in choosing goals for yourself that are actually in alignment with what you truly want to be doing every day. I would agree with this. I still agree with this. I have nothing to add or change. So the other thing that is part or a fundamental part of our lives is love and relationships. And so another question that I, I had when I first started getting into non-attachment and reading like the yoga sutras, it was, okay, but what about love? Like I'm natural, I'm a natural born lover. Okay. So I'm like, how do I embrace non-attachment? But I don't want to let go of love. And th again, very simple answer to this. Embracing non-attachment with love and relationships does not mean that you don't open yourself up to love or connections. It's actually the complete opposite of this. It is true, unconditional love. And it's loving without the need for somebody to behave a certain way, to be a certain way, or to have any expectations expectations really of that person. It's allowing them to grow, allowing them to make their own decisions, allowing them to change even if they want to. And that kind of love is hard. And that's why normally we only really give that love to people that we're related to by blood because it's our blood that keeps us connected even as we shift and change. And thus we say like, we're going to love you anyway because we're family, right? And so instead, when you love freely, which is a very difficult or can be a very difficult thing to do. It can be, it doesn't have to be, but it can be because it's very, it's a very vulnerable state of love, but it's only vulnerable again, if you're attaching to needing their love in return. All I can think about, like a perfect example of this is my dad. I was very, very lucky to feel that sense of love from my dad and always remember him saying like, do whatever you need to, that's going to make you happy. Like if we wanted to try karate, he'd put us on karate. If we wanted to do dance, he'd put us in dance. And it was always like, no matter what you feel like you need to explore, no matter who you are, I'm going to love you anyways. And that was a very, 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 like, first of all, very healthy, strong thing to feel at a very young age, but also too, it gave me the sense to feel like I could evolve and grow and get curious about life and try on different hats and try on different styles and different dreams and see what fits and what didn't, because it was never like my choice needed to mirror one of my dads or that I needed his approval of what I was interested in in order to get his love. And that's unconditional love. I'm going to love you no matter who you become, no matter what you do. This is not to say that 
you would give this love to somebody who hurts you. Like you also need to be able to have your own boundaries of respect, but it's not saying like, I need you to love me this way. Otherwise I can't love you. It's loving people while allowing them to follow their own path to be their own person. Again, it kind of ties back into that. You own nothing. Like you are not mine. I am not yours. Like, even my dad, it's like, yes, I say my dad, but my dad belongs to himself and same with vice versa. I, I'm his daughter, but I belong to me and allowing people and respecting people enough to think like you get to do you and I'm going to love you anyways. It's not an easy thing to do, but that's the kind of unconditional love that comes from non-attachment. Interesting. So I think that's pretty on par with what I would still believe and what I talked about earlier. And now it's funny how I spoke about my relationship to my dad three years ago, and now I'm doing it through the lens of being a mom to my son. But I agree that I think that non-attachment when it comes to love and relationships really is unconditional love or just the experience of connection to other without needing that connection to behave or be in any kind of way, you know? And it makes so much sense. And I also totally agree that a lot of the times we save that love or, or have that love for the people that we are related to because that relation is what keeps us unconditional as we go through shifts and changes in life. And as we sometimes, you know, behave in ways that aren't so great towards each other, family, that essence of family brings us back to one another. It really does come back to that idea that at its core, we do need relationship to other. And it is a form of attachment that is mandatory as a human being experiencing a human life. And perhaps there could be, or there is space for a chapter of the things that we need, but needs don't necessarily need to mean attachments. It's more so we need love. We need unconditional love and experience of connection and healthy relation to other. We need to go through experiences of highs and lows. We need a sense of motivation, hope. We need hope. We need things to hope for and hold on to as human beings, because again, that is what perpetuates us in a forward movement. I think what I would conclude now and today, and maybe three years, three and a half years from now, I can touch on this again, but I really truly feel we've hit home more than once the truest essence of non-attachment, which is allowing yourself to just truly and fully experience life in its fullness and reminding yourself over and over again that it is all ever-changing, it is all fleeting, it is all to be experienced in its fullness no matter what it is, and it is or requires a state of surrender. And that when we catch ourselves making it about us, making it about who we are or our value or our, our ego in a lot of ways, when we catch the ego coming in and starting to attach to things, it, it brings it back to our essence instead of our ego, our essence as the soul experiencing the human body and the human life and the human flow or the state of flow that we are going through. And so surrender, flow, surrendering to the state of flow and being okay with the unknown and the things that we can't control. I think those are, I feel those are, I believe those are the truest essence and the truest ingredients of non-attachment. However, I'm always open to, and I'm not attached to even that. I am always open to having my mind expanded or my belief system or my perspective expanded in some way. So with that, how do you guys feel about everything we've talked about today? Where do you stand on this idea of non-attachment? What does it mean to you? Do you think that it is important? How can you explain it in the best of ways, knowing that it is almost, again, a contradiction to try and explain non-attachment because then you're attaching to an idea? I would love to hear where you stand on this matter. And without further ado, thank you so much for whoever sent that in. I do believe and I have seen, I've never really, I don't watch a whole lot of YouTube. Maybe I should, but I have seen that there have been a lot more videos popping up about the truest essence of non-attachment and like how to move through life and not get attached to things. I, I don't know what's being said out there. So if there's any ideas or concepts that have evolved since my filming of this, or even since today, right now, recording the updated version, would love to hear them again, always, always open to expanding my knowledge and expanding my perspective and hearing something or seeing something from a viewpoint I've never you know, thought of. So let me know. 
And without further ado, I am cheersing you all a very empty, sticky honey teacup, and I will talk to you all in the next one. Bye, everyone. Wow.